thank you. It's great to be with you today. Um, you know, COVID press conferences are not something new to me. Uh, they're certainly not something new to uh, Dr. Dunn. And, um, you know, I'm brokenhearted that we continue to have uh, the health risk in our community and the challenges that our community is facing right now. Um, COVID has hit millions of people in ways uh, that, you know, I think you can maybe even ignore if you're not personally impacted. Um, but when you are, uh, it's significant. COVID is significant to you personally. When a loved one faces COVID, um, whether it's a minor inconvenience, that does happen, or some very, very heartbreaking loss. Uh, and it's the heartbreaking loss that we're fighting against. You know, right now our hospitals are underwater. Um, they have traditional cases coming in, certainly, and a much, much higher rate uh, of people coming in due to COVID than this time last year. And sadly, 85% of people who died from COVID from January 1st through September 10th were unvaccinated. So that's 299 unvaccinated individuals who passed away during that time frame. We know that the unvaccinated are 5.1 times at greater risk from dying from COVID. They're 6.8 times greater at a greater risk of being hospitalized due to COVID and 5.9 times greater risk of testing positive for COVID than those who are vaccinated. Our Salt Lake County team continues to vaccinate. We continue to work with partners to reach out to the community, um, to find ways for people who have not had access, have had barriers to come in and get back vaccinated. Vaccinations readily available through partners, through our um, drug stores and pharmacies. And um, even so, we continue to see this Delta variant really putting our community at risk. And I'll tell you, we've been through a lot of interventions along the way, and we've had restaurants impact as, impacted and businesses closed. We're not suggesting that. What we're suggesting is vaccination for those who have not been vaccinated and mask wearing um, when around others, um, just so that we can prevent the spread of COVID-19. So with that, um, we really want um, to both educate and inspire people um, to step up and people who may be hesitant. And we really felt that some of the real world stories of COVID's impact were important stories to tell. And that's the purpose of this media campaign that you're gonna learn more about. And I wanna thank um, the, all of the participants who told personal stories about um, their COVID journey. And we have Shelly and Erica here today, and I wanna thank you for participating both in the campaign. Thank you for being here today. So with that, I'm gonna turn it over to Dr. Angela Dunn. Okay, good morning. So the politics associated with this pandemic have obscured the scientific facts and the human impact that COVID has had on our families, our friends, and our communities. The truth about COVID campaign shares first-person perspectives from Utahns just like us. Their lives have been impacted by COVID. They'll share their experiences, their messages to other Utahns, so that we can learn from them before it's too late for the rest of us. Featured Utahns in this campaign include people who have lost loved ones to COVID and people who themselves continue to suffer from long COVID. It tells the stories of business owners, creative professionals whose livelihoods have been seriously impacted by this pandemic. And you'll hear from the healthcare workers, the school teachers, and members of our communities of color and the LGBT community. I hope you take these stories to heart and then take action to protect yourself, your loved ones, and your neighbors by choosing to get vaccinated. 
I'm honored to introduce our speakers today. We've got two of our campaign participants, high school biology teacher Shelly Wensbar and Erica Say, a parent and a pediatric physician assistant. We've asked them to take a minute or two to share their personal stories with you about what the COVID vaccine means to them. Hello, my name is Shelly. Um, COVID has had a little bit uh, different experience for me than I think that a lot of people have had, although I know I'm not alone in this. And I am a high school biology teacher. I uh, had suffered through last year, just like everybody else, and, and um, frustrated with having things shut down. And then last December, my husband was diagnosed with leukemia. And that changed our world. <laughs> I'm sorry. Thought I'd be able to get through this. Um, so we both had the vaccine. And um, with my husband's particular type of leukemia, it is the very white blood cells that would make the vaccine effective. And so he's right now, so it, it really didn't work for him. And now it's completely ineffective because he's in the hospital right now um, with a bone marrow transplant. And things are really looking good. They're positive, but I need the help of the community because right now, he has zero white blood cells. His official count right now is zero. And that means he cannot fight this off. And there just really is no medicine or um, artificial help that he can receive to overcome this loss that he has in his own immune system. And wearing masks and getting vaccinated is, as a community is the only thing that is gonna really keep him safe. And as a school teacher, I'm there every day in the classroom with these students who I really would love to encourage to get this vaccine and to wear masks and to help keep our community safe. It's not just my husband that's going through this. This is a, a community-wide thing and I really hope that uh, everybody can see our messages and that it can influence them to, to get the vaccine and wear masks. Thank you. Good morning, my name is Erica Say. I'm a pediatric physician assistant in this community here in the Salt Lake area. I've been practicing for 10 years in this community. I am a parent of three children, one who has been in the hospital six times due to underlying medical conditions. And luckily, when my daughter had COVID last year, he did not test positive. I wanna reiterate some numbers and some facts to the community, to everybody listening right now. They are delaying surgeries at primary children's right now as we speak because they are full. It's not just COVID. We have rhinovirus, we have adenovirus, we have enterovirus, we have illnesses almost at the level of January, which is the dead of winter right now. We are seeing RSV at levels we've never seen in the early fall before. To those that say masks don't work in our leadership in this very state, we have proof right now that it does work. We have the numbers, we have the data from just the four weeks that schools have been open. Salt Lake City District has almost half of the cases per 10,000 that all the other districts in the Salt Lake County have. 500,000 children in the United States have tested positive for COVID in the last two weeks. 30,000 have been hospitalized. We here experienced a death in Salt Lake County just last week. We have to get vaccinated, we have to wear masks, we have to do our part to save those around us and to continue to fight this fight until we can get through to the other side. They're doubling up children in rooms at primary children's. The nurses are tired, the doctors are tired. We can't continue to fight this fight anymore without the help of the community and that includes every single person out there. Every single person's 
Decisions make a difference. Don't think that yours won't make a difference. At this time last year, only 12% of the cases testing positive for COVID were kids. Now it's 25%, that's one in four. The hospital at Primary Children's is running at 110% capacity, where normally it's supposed to run at 75 to 80% capacity. We are hurting our children. The decisions that you're making are hurting our children. It may not be directly your children, could be your neighbor's child, could be your, your community church's child. It could be the adults. We just listened to the mayor say that we've had over 200 deaths of unvaccinated people, adults in this community. We need to get vaccinated. We need to wear masks. Please, please listen to your health care providers. Go and meet with them if you have concerns, if you have questions. Please read the legit and 100% scientific facts. Don't believe things from your neighbors or from sites that are not completely verified. Thank you for your time. So I just want to share um, from a personal perspective as a mom, my greatest day of relief was the day that my youngest was able to get vaccinated. And I know that many parents who have younger children um, can't experience that relief yet. And we can support them by masking when we're around others, um, by making, uh, by even vaccinated kids masking when around other kids to set to sh to pr to allow for that extra comfort and support of the unvaccinated kids and I'll tell you again my my greatest day was the day that I was able to take my child in for his vaccine um, I have a lot of thoughts today I'm excited about this campaign as yet another step but I just want to encourage people to address the barrier that they face as it relates to becoming vaccinated if they're not yet vaccinated. Um, if it's you need some support um, with an employer, just call my office. We have resources. Call the health department. We have resources. I ask also that neighbor to neighbor, you help persuade, you help transport, you help identify a location and a time where somebody can get vaccinated and one neighbor to the next, one friend to the next, one employee to the next, we work um, to get our community's health restored. At this particular time, my greatest concern is the one raised, our hospitals. Um, there, we, we just don't know what's around the corner in terms of uh, lost life, um, not due to COVID, uh, due to a, an accident or an illness that was unknown, an unavailable bed, um, personnel not being able to respond as quickly as we're used to in our healthy community. These are real, real risks to us right now. And, you know, there were stages of COVID where we had concern over our economy, over the viability of our restaurants, over our general welfare. Right now, it's beds available in our hospitals, and it's a very, very frightening time for us as a community. So with that, um, I wanna again thank Shelly and Erica for your courage, for your time, for being willing to publicly um, send the important messages that you're sending today. And I want you to take a look at these posters on them. You can see some of the campaign materials. Um, we have some online ads. Um, we'll be seeing ads on transit, and you can also view the testimonial videos on thisisourshot.com, and you'll see them featured on the county's various social media channels. So at this stage, um, I am sure that Dr. Dunn would be willing to take some questions, maybe she Shelly, Erica, or myself. Any, any questions? Yes. You know, the county, uh, using its broad resources, the county health department, we are um, 
coordinating with schools, we are coordinating with testing, we are case tracing, we are targeting our limited resources, we're expanding resources, we're budgeting. Um, what we now need are policymakers willing to step up. So I would like to see more from state leaders, from our legislature, um, for all those in a position um, to enact policy change. I would support that. You know, we know um, masks and vaccinations are the tools. So any policies around vaccinations and masking, I would absolutely appreciate coming um, from policymakers.